So, serious topic time. Or ser serious, yeah, ser yeah, probably a serious topic, I would assume all things considered. So, over the last week or last weekend, it feels like to me anyway, especially on techno Twitter, especially on DJ Twitter, the whole community or if you're a community, the scene has been in absolute disarray, right? Especially off the back of the plague raves and the debate around that and some of the big name artists going, you know, some of the business techno lot been getting booked to play all these, you know, essentially risque parties in locations where COVID rates were really high and spiked as soon as they left. It just seemed like, you know, there is a lack of kind of cohe no, there's a lack of um community, a lack of understanding um a lack of introspection just a complete mess of a situation and then coming off the back of that we had the news that eric marillo was accused of sexual battery in miami and the details were quite foggy at the beginning but we were kind of i think the first story maybe came out in july august i'm not too sure when that first story sort of arose but it sort of kind of came to um head when he essentially handed himself in when kind of the rape kit was basically, I think yeah, the rape kit basically had his DNA in it, and then he kind of handed himself in, and then he was released on bail, and then unfortunately over the last what week or so, um, he passed away. Now, of course, we don't know what the cause of death is, but it's safe to assume that more likely than not, it was probably an overdose of some sort, maybe brought upon by the stress of the situation of what he's going through, maybe feeling guilty. Regardless, we don't know what it is. I can't say kind of the situation, but you know, you can put one and one together and. Kind of make the assumption that it was something to do with the allegations and for some odd reason i'm not too sure why but maybe the plague graves and the whole business techno thing shouldn't be a surprise but there is a particular segment of our community that thought it might be beneficial or good at the time to sort of come out and defend i'm not defend his honor let me not say defend his honor but essentially honor his death in some regard and say how good of a guy he was and um they remember him from only the good stuff they kind of went through and it really made me question just um the lack of reading a room um the lack of compassion the lack of understanding some of these people some of these DJs having a scene, especially some of the people that are kind of operate on the higher echelons of the totem pole. And it's really disheartening. I have to say that, especially even someone for myself who I wouldn't necessarily categorize as someone that would get kind of bummed reading kind of people's responses online. I don't really care for the most part. I'll just keep it moving. But seeing some of the people's responses and seeing how they're sort of defending their position and seeing some of the fans online sort of defending artists who they've never met people who aren't you know going to put money in their pocket who are not going to you know remember their birthday who don't give a scooby-doo if you unfollow or follow them right defending them as if they're like their their you know blood relatives is odd odd to say the least um a bit sycophantic right maybe i hadn't hadn't maybe it's my fault because i wasn't necessarily exposed to um that fan base of business techno people right because it's not something i i listen to from day to day but it's just really really disheartening regardless anyway um so i guess um business techno here made a entire thread i'm going to loot actually it's got all the reactions to it but let's kind of go through it kind of step by step and then we can kind of give my impression on what the actual situation is so of course the story kind of leaked no sorry a story here number one um says basically he was accused this is an accusation article here from local 10 okay if you're on screen dj Marilla accused of sexual battery at miami beach home it says the following at Marilla, an international superstar dj has been arrested and charged with sexual battery on a woman police say it happened at his miami beach home back in december detectives say Marilla, 49 and his accuser were both working as djs at a private party on the star island later and later went to Marilla's home in la Gork, um a drive for drinks along with another woman according to the arrest report the witness so the victim told the detective that Marilla made several advances towards towards uh, some sexual nature but she refused all of his attempts she told police she was intoxicated and later found a room inside the home to sleep by herself right cool then the things get dark she reported waking up nude um on the bed with marilla standing on the side of the bed also nude jesus christ marilla denied the accusations on wednesday the results of the rape kit came back and tested positive from marilla's dna the police report says marilla turned himself in with his attorney so again pretty disgusting first off isn't it? yeah like you're going you know you're a high-flying dj playing at a private party alongside another dj who's also in a scene which i think is complete sacrilege i've always said from the very beginning that we should it, the scene should be a little bit more protective of each other like we should kind of like you know if you're going out and you see somebody getting sloppy drunk 
um, they're falling over themselves, they're dropping their stuff. You should kind of go out your way to get them a glass of water, make sure they're okay, try and get them connected, really connected with their friends, maybe get them assistance through a security guard, maybe just help them out to maybe get a cab, whatever it may be. But I think it's our responsibility being in those kind of scenes to make sure that person's fine because the last thing you want is for a situation to arise where you kind of turn the other cheek and be like, you know what, someone else will deal with it. And then it transpires that that person fell down, broke an arm or had an overdose, whatever it is, right? That's a bit extreme. But regardless, you have to kind of protect the people that are in your space, I think. I think club culture should be, which even though I don't believe in it for the out, for the real world, I do think club culture can be its own little utopia. It can be a little safe space, a little safe haven that we create for each other, right? That we sort of kind of protect at all costs from any kind of... Um, uh, uh, bad characters right that should be what it should be about regardless of what level you are underground warehouse party or glitzy miami night place right it should be a place where everybody in that vicinity should feel safe liberated and free if you look back at some of the old parties back in the day with mancuso and kind of how you know i'm um, stringent they were with entry policies or just the way they were, they were done in one location one guy sitting on the turntable spinning records part of the reason why those things are successful is because it provided a great platform people to come just express themselves especially if you read some of the earlier accounts of studio 54 not when it went to shit right and the, you know the velvet rope essentially kind of killed them but towards the especially in the beginning when you know it was the kind of it place to be part of the reason why it was because it was the place where celebrities could be anonymous and just kind of be themselves right you kind of have that with some of the clubs in the world now with burger I'm being a standard example where it's they've created a safe space where people can actually go out and enjoy themselves without the fear of being papped or being noticed or you know being preyed upon whatever it may be right you just go out and enjoy yourself you know under the pitch blackness and throbbing sounds of techno so when I see stuff like this it really annoys me especially when it's done from industry with some within people that are in the scene to other professionals working because you know how hard it is especially if you're a female dj right i rail on some of them i think the immediate lenses and all those kind of people can be a little bit detrimental to the overall success of the female djs in general right just in terms of how she carries herself you know the hypocrisy that she has and all that malarkey the fact that i don't necessarily think she's that good at what she does but that aside you still have to respect like um how hard it is to get into that industry as a dj right especially it being nightlife right you think about the perils and the obstacles you have to kind of maneuver in the nightlife industry as a person let alone a woman so when women are in the scene i think you do really owe it to yourself and to them to go about it to go about to go above and beyond to kind of make sure they're safe as a guy i would say in my opinion you have to always do that so to see somebody doing it to a fellow dj a fellow peer is just heinous to say the least then i guess the story evolved when it was announced that he was found dead in his miami home and this is a story here from um tmz it says the following um, Eric Miller, I like to move it. DJ Dead at 49. It says here, um, best known for his 993 here, I like to move it, has died. TMZ has learned. Law enforcement, law enforcement sources tell us that DJ music producer's body was found this morning in Miami Beach. The circumstances around his death are currently unclear. Best known for his work in house music, Marilla produced his big hit in the 90s with electro dance track, I like to move it, which he put out under the stage name Real to Real. He's a three time winner of the DJ Awards Best House DJ and three time winner of the Best International DJ, including his most recent win in 2009. Um, Murillo's death comes a few weeks after he was arrested in Miami for sexual battery charges. The alleged victim claims she and Murillo went to his place after the DJing. She alleges he, she uh, she resisted his sexual advances and then went to sleep in a private place but woke up nude with Murillo standing next to her, also nude. He told himself in uh, August 6, he and Murillo was 49 years old. And I guess the update here is this, that the so far Miami Beach told TMZ that there's no apparent signs of foul play uh, and Murillo's cause death will be determined determined by a medical examiner so more than likely than not is you know it's definitely going to be an overdose or you know um yeah or something along those kind of lines right and then i guess you know for the for the victim it's obviously heartbreaking that you can't get justice um there's always going to be a sort of a uh, kind of asterisk against the allegations even though you know for the most part looking at the actual bare facts of the matter um you go back with two people to your home um, one dude only it seems like and two girls um, you're both obviously intoxicated and maybe high you try to make advances to the victim they rebuff them and say no she probably feels too inebriated to go home on her own at that time at night finds a room to go stay on her own because she feels probably occupied with the other female who probably 
ended up, I don't know what ended up happening over there. And then suddenly you wake up next to them and they're naked. And then, you know, luckily the, the woman um, decided to go straight away and get a rape kit done. Cause I think in some instances, women don't end up doing that because, you know, they, they get uncomfortable or yeah, it's just not the best. It's not the most, um, it's not the most uh, easiest process to go through. If you've seen um, what actually goes, what actually happens during rape kit procedures to get rape kit done, he denies allegations. The DNA comes back, obviously, that, you know, it, it gets proved that he, you know, his DNA obviously is in that rape kit. He hands himself in, which is obviously another indication of guilt in that regard. And then he gets released on bail pending, you know, I'm assuming a court date. So for the first, for the most part, especially if you're not even adding into the fact that, you know, there's stories, even for myself, just somebody that's completely detached from it and not in the Miami scene whatsoever, just on forums and stuff, whatever. There's always been word Eric Murillo has been a bit of a creep. He's been somebody that kind of, you know, is maybe a little bit too handsy, a little bit too aggressive when it comes to um, approaching women in a club, especially when he's had a couple of drinks. And I think he's had a, you know, he's gone through bouts of alcohol abuse. I'm pretty sure he went to rehab maybe in 2017. I remember hearing stories about that again. This is what only what I remember hearing. So take all those things into account. It's not hard to believe that most probably this situation actually happened the way the victim is remember um, has kind of alleged. So in my opinion, I would think even if I was his friend and he passed away, it probably isn't the best time to put up a glowing tribute of this guy and say how much he meant to you and all this stuff because it's very raw, especially for victims of sexual abuse, right? To reread the story, it's probably really triggering. It probably kind of conjures up all kinds of emotions. And to see people in your own scene, a scene that you're already kind of skeptical about, especially with the whole playgrave stuff, right? You've seen people's morals, you've seen people's true colors come out, you've seen DJs who have kind of, you know, really operate on the high totem pole of DJ food chain um justifying why it makes sense for them to fly you know all across the halfway across the road to go and play a gig and then somehow kind of say some sort of altruistic reason when really it's just to line their pockets right when people the people actually do need to go play the gigs aren't getting any gigs whatsoever so you're seeing all this stuff happening and then you're seeing these same people going out and sort of lauding and honoring this alleged you know probably what 90 percent sure he's definitely a rapist right on their feed and then they have no idea why it could be triggering they have no sensitivity they have no tact no ability to read a room just really kind of sloppily 